The recent VR Steam sale has opened the floodgates on many fresh VR releases, which is great for my heart and bad for my wallet. Now, you might ask yourself, hey, this guy is going to buy a bunch of new VR games and tell me which ones are worth it. But now, uh, counterpoint. Luckily, any VR game worth its salt also offers a demo experience, so instead of spending more money than I have subs, I'm going to work my way through these demos and determine which game comes out on top. The winner will receive the highest award I can offer, my money. Let's start out strong with Arcade, a $20 banger that brings the arcade shooter to life. Character movement feels good, shooting mechanics are straightforward, I love how the reload action is the same as if you're playing a traditional arcade shooter, which is just uh, throwing your arm down to your side. Also having power-ups that are instant use keeps the game moving forward. Needing an inventory slot for all your items is critical for many games, but not for arcade running guns. Uh, having a boss phase also added a healthy level of depth. But there is one thing about this game that stands out and really highlights how a demo can make a game intriguing. When you first boot in, you start in this basement that's unsettling at best. Uh, if you try and leave the basement, you get this weird retro blue screen that kind of matches the aesthetic of the game itself. Yeah, that. That right there. Yeah, that's, that's a little sus. Uh, is this just a coincidence where the developers decided to copy and paste a texture across the demo? Or maybe your basement is also a virtual reality setting and you're playing an arcade game in a VR space in VR. The demo also has subtle messaging that is leading me to this conclusion with the return to reality option in the menu. All in all, 10 out of 10 is a strong competitor for my money. I also played Punji VR if I'm saying that correctly. The weapon mechanics are surprisingly good. Uh, the feel of shooting Vietnam War era weapons is exactly what VR should be used for. The demo provides a flushed out feel of the game, allowing you to progress through two settings. Now, I prioritize mechanics and vibes over the scenic appearance, uh, but even with that being said, this game isn't winning any graphical arts awards. The enemies have so-so awareness, and picking up dropped weapons took me the entire demo to figure out. I'm throwing this game under, keep an eye on, has potential, but would rather spend $20 on a turtle toy. Next was Down Fast VR. Uh, currently only available in demo form, and um, well... I'll just say my experience was nothing like the game trailer. <laughs> oh. oh, I was so close. Please, please. <laughs> I also played Mount Wingsuit 2. Now, I never played the original, but the demo shows improvement based off the videos of the original. Uh, this is another game with great potential and definitely has a niche, but I, a grown adult who checks my bank account prior to buying a $15 game, will be holding off on both Mount Wing suits. Timberman VR follows in the footsteps of Beat Saber for those who want to flail their arms around to music. I love the color scheme and overall experience of the demo. It was short, sweet, and satisfying. In all honesty, this would be a competitor for the bag, but the game is not viable yet. So, uh, you're being labeled as kinda cute, might text later. I also spent some time in Tiny Island, which provides one of the more unique experiences of all the games. Being the watchful eye over my dumpling village is a very symbolic feeling for me taking care of my pets. It is time-consuming, sometimes menial collective of actions, with the reward of watching these little cuties flourish. This is another game set to release later this year. I'm not certain how well this game will scale, so I'm saying GG go next for now. Holy shit! 
The final game on this list is Compound. I am obsessed with almost everything about the game. The art style is fun and colorful, the guns feel good to shoot and reload, uh, as well as having a high degree of variety. The rogue genre is secretly my favorite, and you get hunted by a mutant rat. What more could you want? The game runs smooth, it feels good, and you pick your difficulty by eating or drinking. Not to mention that this is the only demo experience I haven't beaten yet. Once you put a difficulty choice in front of me, the ego demon pops on my shoulder and guilts me into playing above the difficulty I feel comfortable on no matter what. No joke though, this rat is built different. Okay. After all is said and done, which game did I buy? I bought Kayak Mirage. Uh, why did I buy this? Honestly, looking back at it, I have no idea why. As stated earlier, I'm not typically drawn to games for their scenic prowess, and yet, here I am. I keep having flashbacks to my first winter here in New York, and having that deep desire to partake in outdoor activities. I think I saw this game and thought, man, this looks amazing for those weeks where there's no sun and my toes get cold enough that they need their own hand warmers. The game is genuinely a good time though. It really does look amazing and offers both a race and scenic mode, which is a nice touch. It's just, I probably won't be playing this game much till next January. So I know this video ended up being kind of a roller coaster. Thank you to everyone who stuck around with me and I will see you in another video.